Welcome to Our Table, Our Talk, a program of the Community and Family Resources Department of the City of Bloomington. In honor of Black History Month, we're talking about issues involving African Americans living in Bloomington. These conversations are in no way meant to be only for African Americans, however. They're meant to spark conversations throughout the community. Welcome to part two of our conversation on mental health and emotional wellness. I want to start by talking to one of our guests today, um, Jasmine Denny, who has had some trauma in her life. And I'm just going to ask Jasmine if you can tell us a little bit of your story and, and the trauma that you've experienced. Oh. Okay, so um, when I was 12 years old, um, my oldest brother, um, he had, he struggled with mental illness. And so one morning, um, he waited for my sister to arrive home and he um, decided that he didn't want my family to go through any hurt or any pain anymore. So he then went on and, and took a gun and he murdered my brother, my sister, my nephew, um, my stepmom, and my, um, and he shot my grandmother who, who survived. Um, because she played dead, but she um, was the one that ended up telling the story. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then he took the gun, put a smile on his face, and he killed himself. Mm -hmm. And so this happened September 27, 2003, in Gary, Indiana at 5 a.m. Mm -hmm. So um, that was the beginning um, and the start of a very trauma-filled life for me. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I can imagine, thank you so much for sharing that with us, um, but how has that, how, down through the years, affected you, do you think? Um, so it's affected me in many, many different ways. Um, um, it has caused me to lose many relationships. Um, I don't trust very often. Um, um, one, like, strong effect right after it's happening, um, that happened. Mm -hmm. um, I got diagnosed with type 1 diabetes um, December 8th of that same year, and so I became insulin dependent, and they, the doctors were saying it was brought on by stress and different things like that. And so, um, you know, just being 12 years old and mm -hmm. going through that, wow. waking yeah. up, you have a full family, and then you don't, yeah. you know. Yeah. And it was like they were snatched away from me, you know, by your own flesh and blood. You know, that was my oldest brother. So, you know, that was somebody, you know, you saw as a protector. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, for, for, for him to then, you know, be the reason, be the cause of so much distress. Um, but just, just carrying on, I then just went into a huge down spiral. Mm -hmm. I was... I was horrible, you know, I went to five different high schools, I was always fighting, um, you know, I never went to class, I never cared about what happened to me, I never really took care of my diabetes, mm -hmm. um, I, I probably um, lost probably 60 pounds within those, those years, you know, um, but nothing really mattered to me because I felt like, well, why did they have to go, you know, mm -hmm. I, I should have been with them, yeah. you know. I didn't understand why it was them and not me. You know, just like, why am I left on this earth to experience so much hurt and, you know, to experience the rebuttal from all of that mm -hmm. that had happened. So um, just experiencing that and going through that pain, it began a lot of turmoil mm -hmm. in my life, you know. Um, I was not a nice person. I wasn't gonna say that I was a, a good person. I was fighting mm -hmm. the the good Jasmine. You know, I was yeah. fighting. I wanted to be the Jasmine that ran the streets. I wanted to be the Jasmine that didn't care how I talked to my mom. It got mm -hmm. so bad. My mom was like, "You, you know, you have to go." Mm -hmm. You know, so I ended up coming here for um, for school for a little while and my brother as an undergrad um one of my older brothers as an undergrad then took me in his mm -hmm. home you know and because my mom was like this is too much i don't know what's going on but it's just like i didn't care i had yeah. no you know no remorse for anything that i did or said you know i didn't nothing mattered to me mm -hmm. and so that that just started that huge downfall of you know what was known as like very, very, very dark moments in my life. And I, I will note that 
you told us off camera that when this happened, you did receive family counseling, but yes. that you this kept triggering throughout your yes. life. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. So I, we re, um, the city of Gary um, gave us family counseling. They paid for us to come. So we went into um, Gary Methodist Hospital. And they had in-house counselors, mm -hmm. you know, um, just making sure that we we're okay mm -hmm. because, you know, at that time that was a huge, like, that it was, a, I mean, essentially it was a massacre. So yeah. it was a huge thing. And so um, just with it being inside the family, mm -hmm. you know, um, they paid for us to, um, to, to receive counseling. And so I went through that, um, went through the counseling as a 12 year old mm -hmm. child, you yeah. know, and I didn't realize um, until I was well into my 20s that I probably needed to continue to go and mm -hmm. I probably needed to continue to be okay. We went probably three times and you know, I was like, okay, we're good, we're mm -hmm. okay, we have to keep it moving, life is happening, I have to go back to school mm -hmm. on Monday, you know, and it was it was hard for a very long time. I would see my friends just all happy, mm -hmm. surrounded, yeah. you know, they were just playing outside and doing things, and I was just, I was um, essentially depressed, yeah. you know, um, and they were giving, they stuffing me with medication, mm -hmm. you know, um, different medications like Prozac, different things that, um, were supposed to help me, you know, um, be okay. Yeah. And it actually made me worse. I was somber. I was like, okay, yeah, I don't, I don't care. You know, mm -hmm. I have no feelings mm -hmm. <laughs> about you or anything that you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, and it, it, it just, it just started like a huge downfall. Yeah. Rima, I want to ask you, I mean, I, there are people that, and women especially, yeah. that suffer trauma a lot, almost every day, not to the level of, of Jasmine, um, but whether it's sexual assault or uh, abandonment or things like that. And, and I think a lot of times that's held in. Internalized. Yeah, yeah internalized. And, um, you know, and, and we don't realize that it can trigger yeah. over and over again. And can you talk about um, some of that and how that that works. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, thank you for sharing and being so open. Yeah. A couple things that stick out just with trauma and even uh, trauma that a whole family can experience. Mm -hmm. Everyone's taking away their individual um, kind of perception of what happened and internalizing a belief. So when you bring up uh, black women specifically, mm -hmm. uh, we see a lot of role models and, you know, it's just kind of portrayed to us to just be strong. And so even as you mentioned, being 12 years old, I wonder how much of that is, you know, just pick up and move on, right? We've yeah. given you three sessions and not yeah. seeing that, hey, this might need to follow you throughout, you know, you're going through adolescence, which is already a hard time, mm -hmm. but right off of this trauma. Um, but there is a lot of that because we see a lot of strong black women and it's celebrated and it should be, but I don't know that the emotional kind of attending to, mm -hmm. yeah, there's experiences we're carrying with us and are we yeah. kind of stopping to kind of check in on those? Yeah. And so emotional wellness comes up, just mm -hmm. are we looking at that? Am I well? Yeah. And I could be, you know, moving on and going through these milestones and like you said, looking like I'm doing well mm -hmm. and okay, but yeah, there's, there's so much that happens inside after yeah. that. And yeah. like you said, internalizing why wasn't it me? And that's what we don't see uh, when you look at the whole family. Well, yeah, it's, it's survivor's guilt, it's PTSD, it's the loss and the grief that comes yeah. with the loss of family members. Yeah. Um, all of that, I think, plays into that. Um, and, and it reminds me of the PTSD that, that someone would have that was in the military that, right. you know, experienced that kind of thing. Um, and I know that that, that you know, just anything, a, a sound, a yeah. bump in the road or anything can just trigger smell, yeah, you know, yeah, and yeah. take you right it's back and you had, had some of that. Oh, very much so. So for me, it was bathtubs mm. because wow. we had to have the funeral in a convention center and we had a four casket funeral only because my nephew was buried with my sister. Um, um, he, um, everyone else had a single shot um, that, that passed away, had a single shot, but my nephew woke up crying. And so my sister woke up from hearing, the sh from hearing him crying, and so she was protecting him. So they um, were taken out with 14 bullets. 12 was found inside my nephew. And so um, he was two years old. 
So um, just as a, a two-year-old, you know. So just just anything white in a box, I just mm. could not mm -hmm. see. I couldn't yeah. see caskets. I couldn't see bathtubs, you know. And for a very long time, I couldn't see women with babies, mm -hmm. you know, because I was like, they didn't even have a choice. My sister, she was a very, very, very young mom, you know. And so she didn't have that choice to then be able to raise um, my nephew and um, it was disheartening. I would see them, I would be riding in the back seat of my mom's car and I would see my sister on the, the sidewalk holding his hand and then they would look right at me and wave, you know. And so I was plagued with a lot mm -hmm. of things. I would just see them everywhere, mm -hmm. you know. It was like, oh my gosh, you know, just doing regular stuff that we would do, you know. And so it was, it was detrimental but yeah my I, I couldn't excuse me I can say that my biggest biggest thing was bathtubs I mm -hmm. just could not you know mm -hmm. I just was like okay I don't want to look in them mm -hmm. it just hurt me every time because their their caskets were white and gold mm -hmm. and so it's like yeah, I don't want to see right. yeah, yeah it was horrible for me so how how do we as women I mean and, and aside from the trauma, but the everyday stressors, mm -hmm. because on top of wow. that fantastic trauma, I mean, you just have everyday stress of being right. black in America or a female in America or a black female in America. Um, how do we as women um, uh, deal or not deal well with, mm -hmm. with some of our stress? I, you talked about, or I think you talked about, uh, being like the strong black yeah. woman. Um, and something to be celebrated, something that is celebrated, but also something that causes us a lot of stress. Yes. Um, yeah, so. I feel, you know, to speak to how do we, I think just recognizing it too mm -hmm. and making spaces where it is okay mm -hmm. to have those moments. And so I think of a, a time I was at a conference and, you know, they had us do this activity uh, where we kind of listed out our identity or, you know, just words, just very brief. And um, I had just given a presentation earlier, so I was feeling good. So that was the first thing that came out. And I was surprised that black woman was the last thing I put. I was mm. like, I, usually that's first. Yeah. And so just really this discussion of we're kind of in and out of this identity. We wear our identity. Mm -hmm. right. And it's only when I'm reminded something happened. So, mm -hmm. you know, right. several weeks later had an encounter with someone where I was reminded, oh, yeah, I'm black. And so that tone you're mm. taking with me, OK, I'm a woman. So you're right. minimizing mm -hmm. my, you know, emotions called me you know panicky or you know just words that I know yeah. are maybe not given to a male if they're responding a certain way and so okay. it's in those moments it's brought back to the front and I have mm -hmm. to address it and I recognize okay yeah this is something I can't escape yeah. that's interesting I, I can um, I was thinking about this uh, earlier this week and I don't think I've ever not been able to think about I'm black I'm a mm -hmm. woman you know I'm a black woman in a majority white community you yeah, know yeah. with no real close knit black community I mean except the community that we've created for ourselves um, and so I find that to be just it's almost like you're, you're I don't know I, I think about it as walking through mud like you know mm -hmm. like every day you're just sort of waving through yeah. through mud because you know that there's going to be another whether it's a, whether it's a microaggression whether yeah. somebody just you know like looks at you and says something stupid that you think you need to yeah. <laughs> to, right. to address <laughs> yeah. or or how yeah. the media portrays us yeah. you know and and, and every you look at television and you don't see yourself or when you see someone that looks like you it's nothing like it's you not you know yeah. it's not representative at all and mm -hmm. and so i think that there are always these things coming at us um and and again making that stress level rise i know I mean, you talked about the diabetes and, and um, you know, and then ultimately the neuropathy that it caused. I mean, and so I, you know, I know with myself, you know, there are things that if I'm getting overstressed, you know, mm -hmm. then mm -hmm. I have fibromyalgia. It flares up, you know, right. or, you know, all of those things start to flare. Yeah. yeah. And so, you know, it brings up a good point, too, about mm -hmm. what do we do since it can happen right. so often mm -hmm. throughout the day. and. Um, just we're walking through it we can't escape it mm -hmm. um, 
And so I think it is that where are my safe spaces? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe it's friends that you don't have to explain it to. You know, I think there's difference. I think there are people who can be supportive yes. and want to hear you, mm -hmm. but then there are people I don't maybe have to lead in right. with what just happened or, you know, have a lot of questions. Yeah. You'll just get it if right. I say this is how they responded. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. you know, it brings up that feeling um, that someone else could recognize. Mm -hmm. um, and then just knowing um, from that support, just getting that confidence in, this is, you know, it's not who I am, you know, like mm -hmm. just almost like having to just have this automatic yeah. kind of, uh, you know, I heard it, don't have to keep it, throw it back out. Right. This is the reality of it. And um, being able to vent for me is helpful. Mm -hmm. And I found, you know, just going to other folks and just sharing that was enough. It was like yeah. a weight lifted because it happens. Yeah. You can start thinking, am I crazy? Am I just being sensitive? Mm -hmm. You know, all these things. Right. It's like, no, that yeah. was out of line. You know, and so it's just even hearing that mm -hmm. so you could move on. Right. Right. Yeah, in our previous session, we talked about, um, you know, the barbershop being a place where men gathered. Mm -hmm. And so maybe you're not seeking out uh, professional counseling, but you go to the barbershop and there's a place where you can vent. Yeah. Where, and, and, like and you shared don't, like, what you say, you yeah. don't have to explain, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. They're just people that understand. I have, you know, some close girlfriends, and uh, I know other people do too. Uh, but a lot of times, professional counseling is, you know, required or or necessary. Um, but then there's also sometimes a reluctance, and I think especially for us, I told someone the story about my mom. I mean, my mom is that is she's hardcore. Suck it up, right? You yeah. know, suck it up and keep it moving. You know, yeah. because yeah. Mm -hmm. we don't have time. You know, we don't we don't have time for that, and so. I had to come to the point where it's like, okay, I can't suck this up mm -hmm. anymore, you know, mm -hmm. um, and I'm and I'm gonna have to do something different. And so I don't know if you found that in your life as well, or yes, yes. So I've just come to the realization that I have to allow myself to feel things. Mm -hmm. I have to stay in that moment, acknowledge what's going on, you know, um, accept it, and not beat myself up about it. You know, I have to be able to be okay or else I will just like bottle everything mm -hmm. in and just let it sit and sit and sit until I explode, you know? And then, you know, I come off, you know, um, like a stereotypical black woman mm -hmm. as society mm -hmm. would say, you know, I come off angry, as angry, angry black woman, yes, yeah. or yeah. crazy, you know, yeah. just like, you know, and you know, it's, I'm not that at all. It's just, I've been through a lot. And if you, I didn't have the tools, you know, yeah. to deal with it, you know, it was very much so that suck it up. You have to keep it moving. Mm -hmm. You know, I went to school the next week, you know, wow. um, you know, that's something that I feel like I should have just maybe taken some more time, mm -hmm. you know, been able to deal with it. But, you know, if you aren't prepared for something like right. that, it's like, well, then what do you do? And who prepares mm -hmm. for that? Yeah, right. right. Yeah, you can't right. be prepared. For exactly. That. Yeah. Yeah. But I think it's important, too, that some of the stigma that comes along with, with mental health and, 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 and I don't even want to say mental illness because I think it's just mm -hmm. a matter of being healthy, healthy. Yeah. Um, that, that we try to diminish that stigma and that, and um, you know, that comes yeah. in, and it's not just in the black community, yeah. it's in yeah. the it's community at large. Yeah. But it was interesting, you know, I was like, when you were talking about that, I was thinking, we can either be the strong black woman or we can mm -hmm. be the angry black yeah. woman. Right. Like there's, <laughs> there's no in between, no in between. No, yeah. yeah, there's no, no in between. <laughs> yeah. You can hit everyone's yes. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we do have to normalize mm -hmm. counseling and what that is. Mm -hmm. There's so many practices in counseling that are you know, seen in other practices, right? If you think of spirituality, which is huge in the black community, mm -hmm. yeah. there's, you know, demystifying it, mm -hmm. you know, when right. you think of meditation, it's like, okay, there's components of that we can draw from. Right. And I feel like the counseling field can do better at making those connections. It's not like, hey, come over here, try all these new things. Yeah. And we have to acknowledge that there's a history with not only mental health, medical health, mm -hmm. mis using yeah. um, mm. clients and patients in yes. studies and things like that. So there's a mistrust and we have to address that as well exactly. and kind of bridge that gap to, yeah, re, you know, maybe not even reinvent, but integrate. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's what's working. You have this strong faith. How can we bring that into mm -hmm. counseling? Or here's right. what's working. You do meditation and yoga. How can we bring that into counseling and not so much of just do what we think is best mm -hmm. because so, so yeah. are there practices that do that, that sort of try to com combine it and, and look at it in a more holistic way with your faith or your, your spiritual um, practices or beliefs and bring that into the counseling? Definitely, realm? and I think more so now, just seeing that um, there is like a, I think, 
within the larger society a push for just overall wellness. Mm -hmm. And so I think we can really maximize that and just, oh, I want to be well. And so if we make it kind of like this, oh, okay, everybody's got their yoga studio, yeah. everybody's got right. this, and now I got yeah. my counselor. And I think it's starting to come in yeah. that way. And I could see it going into mm -hmm. other communities that way. Like, this is my wellness yeah. team, basically. <laughs> yeah, well, and, that, and that makes sense. I mean, yeah. I have seen, and unfortunately, I've seen religion mm. and churches sometimes not oh yeah yeah yes. yeah don't do this you yeah should don't be, do, yeah. should be fine because you're here right, right. yeah you should be fine you, yeah. yeah. you know and if yeah. you pray more yeah you know or if yeah. you pray harder yeah. you know or and, and and especially because i've worked in the area of domestic abuse mm -hmm. um it's um and and to see people being sent back to <gasps> abusive situations yeah. and um because that's what the religion says and so I, that you know, it's just finding that right space and those, those things that work, you know, yeah. for you. Um, There's a lot of conversations. Yeah, there, there are, there are a lot of conversations yeah. in that. Yeah, because yeah, I just think about if that's been your, yeah. your faith tradition all your life growing up, yeah, yeah it's, it's hard to tear away from that. And then you do think there's something wrong with you. Right. You know, you think there's something wrong with you. Um, what kinds of signs, uh, Rima, should people be looking for um, if they think they might need some they might need counseling or they may need just to talk to someone because counseling doesn't have to be I'm not the expert but I'm just saying counseling doesn't have to be a five-year long mm, thing no, you know you no. sometimes people just may need someone to, to speak with and Definitely. so yeah what should they be looking for you know I think you know if we look at it from a wellness perspective I think everyone can use someone to touch base with. Um, so there's brief counseling, there's counseling for specific events, mm -hmm. trauma counseling. Um, so finding what works for you or what you mm -hmm. need, but a sign that um, it probably be time to reach out to someone would be if you know the symptoms and stress is starting to impact your functioning at work or school yeah. and you're not able to you know, get out of bed and things where um, you're just kind of stuck Mm -hmm. And sometimes it can really just help boost that and give you the tools. But yeah, the goal is for you to be able to do these on your mm -hmm. own. There are certain things that, yeah, may take a little bit longer, but um, just the nature of unraveling things mm -hmm. may uncover. But yeah, for a majority of people, sometimes, you know, brief counseling is all they need yeah. to really get, you know, some, I'm so amazed get when over the hump. clients yeah. come in, you know, and they just talk and hear themselves and that's what yeah. they needed. Yeah. They just needed a space where it was okay, not someone they knew who had some type of investment mm -hmm. in them being better. That's yeah. sometimes the issue mm -hmm. with going to friends. Friends don't want you to be sad, so they're going to tell you, don't be sad, give you a tissue, <laughs> don't cry, yeah. exactly. all these things, but where yeah. can I go to cry if I just need to right. do that? And sometimes and you so, just need to cry. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. you're fine, you know, and so it helps them see, oh, okay, all this was in me anyways, mm -hmm. I just yeah. needed to do it yeah and so you know I, I would say don't hesitate to reach out it doesn't mean you're gonna be locked in like you said right. for five yeah. years yeah, yeah, you know. and I yeah. know that, that sometimes it can be expensive sometimes mm. you know I mean there are different reasons that that people Definitely. don't go but um, and I think if you can find mm -hmm. that place you know and, and, and maybe you know it's not a place maybe it's just that space with your girlfriends mm -hmm. over a glass of wine sometimes you know if you yeah. that's what you need um, that we should encourage people to do that I just I, I hope that there's something about not only this conversation but other conversations that are happening um, that that says it's okay to talk about it. Yeah, you know it's okay. I mean, you talking about your story. Thank you again for that. But I mean, it's it's okay. You yeah. know, and and you're okay, and yeah. you know, and and ultimately, you know, we all can feel productive and 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 move through society the way we need to. Um, in Bloomington, are there resources um, that people can access for different services? Definitely. So for more immediate services, there's of course the hospital. So if you're kind of feeling in danger to yourself or someone else, immediate need uh, would be to call 911. Mm -hmm. um, there's Meadows Hospital, which is a hospital that um, takes walk-ins that way for crisis. Uh, Center Stone takes crisis walk-ins. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's just a myriad of other services if mm -hmm. you're wanting to consult with someone. I know a lot of therapists that they'll have a phone conversation mm -hmm. with you. Um, so you can oh, kind of see, okay, that, yeah. what are you looking at, you know, for and what kind of things are you wanting to discuss? I like to talk to everyone, you know, mm -hmm. just to explain the perspective I come from, because mm -hmm. it may not be a good fit. And so if you're in a, a situation where it's not like a, a immediate need, I would say, you know, just do some research. Mm -hmm. um, Psychology Today is a website where you can kind of plug in your insurance. If you want to use that, you can plug in. I want Christian counseling you can plug in you know mm -hmm. different things um, so that's a route to go to as well to find 
Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you for being here, Jasmine. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you. I, it, it, I think you're going to help so many yeah. people um, just by, by sharing your story and letting us know that it's an ongoing process, that it's not a one and done. So thanks so much. Thank you so much, much for having me. Thank you. And if you like what we've talked about today, please don't forget to like, comment, or share it on Facebook. Thank you for joining us at Our Table, Our Talk. I was so afraid I was going to go look at a cat.